the Aztecs are probably singing that song this morning. There's excitement all over the city as SDSU has advanced to the Final Four for the first time in school history. And here to join in on the celebration, former SDSU men's basketball coach Michael Brunker, who busted out a really cool jacket for yeah, this. Aztec for life, that's right. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm telling you, we say that enough. Now, I started by asking you immediately, first of all, your reaction to the big win I mean, this is so huge for the program itself. What do you think? Oh, it's tremendous because we've all watched the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship mm -hmm. over the years, and we know the importance of the Final Four. And you keep looking at these teams that keep going year after year, and the question's got to resonate in your mind, why not San Diego State? Mm -hmm. And now we're here. And look at us right now, and we're going to go all the way. So what were your thoughts as the game is going on? I said, you know, obviously there's a lot of emphasis on the foul that was called in the final seconds. What are your thoughts? Let's come back to that foul later. But let, let me just say the game before against mm -hmm. Alabama, in my mind, was probably one of the most unbelievable heavyweight bouts I've ever seen in my life. It was yes. a battle against the number one team in the nation that I can relate to because back in 1977, as an assistant coach to Dick Vitale at the University mm -hmm. of Detroit. We then played the number one team, University of Michigan, in the Sweet 16 at, in Lexington at Rupp Arena on the campus of University of Kentucky. And we know the power of what that's all about, mm -hmm. but we lost that game. We would have loved to continue on and to get to the Elite Eight. We didn't do it. San Diego State did, and they faced Alabama, the number one team, a great team, a fantastic yeah. team. We heard Brandon talk earlier about the NIL ar arrangements right now. That's one of the best teams money can buy, for uh -huh. crying out loud, and San Diego State handled them well. I always felt that the next game was going to be tough because when yeah. you have a tough game like that and you're playing against a Creighton or a Princeton, whatever it might have been, I don't care who it was, I think State might have been a little bit off in that game, and we were. We didn't. Did we play our greatest game? No. Absolutely not. But that's still to come. And I know when Coach Dutcher gets them going, I know they're going to review it. The great leader that he is, they'll assess exactly what happens. But what I love about Coach Brian Dutcher is he always tries to fix the problem and improve the players so mm -hmm. they don't make the same errors again. And I think what's going to happen right now, our best basketball is still to come. So as a coach, how do you get the team focused, the media, the scrutiny? What happens now for this team, and how do you take that and keep them grounded as they practice this week? It doesn't happen today. Mm -hmm. You've had to be doing it all along, and that's the, that's the, the trademark of a Dutcher and prior to uh, Brian, it was Steve Fisher and, and just what they have built there. You know, it's in, in your fabric, it's in your groundwork and that's what leadership's all about. And right now, it's not only about the leadership of the coach, but it's training each of those young men to be self-leaders in their own right, to challenge assumed constraints. It's so easy to step to the line and say, I can't make it, I can't make it, but how do you flip that mm -hmm. script and make sure that you say you can make it. How do you activate your, you know, go to your points of power on the team? And, and what you see is there's players that will be great defenders, great three-point shooters, great inside, great rebounders, whatever it might be. But everybody's got to play their role. And then finally, be proactive in what you're doing with your skills. And that's what San Diego State has is a team full of self-leaders because every game it's a different player stepping up mm -hmm. to do great things to win the game. Like Darion did with the free throw last night. I mean, look at Matt Brown. Bradley had two points. Yeah. You know, Seiko had zero. You know, he had uh, Parrish had zero. They didn't play their best game scoring-wise, but what's going to happen when we put it all together, just like Connecticut did the other night against Gonzaga? Who right. in the world would have thought that Gonzaga would have been down by 30? Right. No and kidding. That, that said nobody. You know, but there, I think that affected them with the game they had before that against UCLA. Right. And so, and the same thing could have happened to us against Creighton, but it didn't because of the leaders that we have on the squad. Okay. So Florida Atlantic, what do you see, and what do the Aztecs need to do in order to get a win? Look in the mirror is what we're looking at right now. It's the same kind of program right now. Hey, the Blue Bloods are gone. They're not there. So those mm -hmm. teams where everybody thinks they should be winning at the number one seeds, nowhere to be seen. Florida Atlantic, San Diego State, schools like that, they're there because they've got something inside them, something special. And, and they believe that they can win. And they believe they've got the capacity to do it. You know, it, it's great teams win close games. Yeah. San Diego State is a great team. I don't care if you win by one or 100. So we come back to the free throw. 
Yeah, he made the free throw when he needed to, but there were a lot of one-point plays throughout that game that made a big difference. You know, when you look at Mensa came, comes in, shooting a jumper from the free throw line, oh. the mid-range jumper, the block shots that he received. A.G., my favorite, I followed him because he's in my men's prayer group. We yeah. prayed over him two years ago when he had the shoulder surgery, the knee surgery, right. the hip surgery. He didn't know if he wanted to play, but here he's diving on every loose ball. Mm -hmm. He's filled with a spirit that you just can't deny. And that's what I see, too, in Florida Atlantic. They've got that same capacity to do that, and so it's going to be a heck of a battle right now. All right. Yes. Do you see the Aztecs hoisting a championship here? I absolutely do, and I've been saying that all along, just because they have the capacity to do great things. They've got the mindset of the leader, and they've got the skill sets of the leader. They set their goals. They're clear and compelling right now. They diagnose themselves. They know it's not all about them. It's about the good of the team. And they also match up and get the leadership that they need from others to be successful. This is where Coach Dutcher and his awesome staff come into play. But also it's the whole community of San Diego that has embraced San Diego State to give them the feeling that, I believe that we can win. And yes. we say that every game at uh -huh. Viejas before the game. And how you heard that last night when they asked Darian about the free throw. He said he believed he could make that free throw. Yes. But if you don't, if you're just happy to be there, you're not going to win the national championship. I guarantee you San Diego State is there with purpose. They will win the national championship. All right, Michael Brunker, so great to have you come in, give Thank us a you. unique perspective, and it's always good to see you. Always good seeing you too.